We're now going to turn our attention to the overflow strategies that the Project Reactor Flux class implements. And as you'll see, there, there are five of them. We outlined them in the previous part of the lesson. Now we're going to look at them in detail. So these overflow strategies are used by subscribers to indicate how they want to have the Project Reactor framework handle items that it emits that can't be processed as fast as they are being received by the subscriber. So let's talk about all five of these models. The first one is the buffer model. And that basically says, hey, if data is getting here faster than we can send it downstream, just put them in a queue, put them in a buffer somewhere, and then eventually they'll get a chance to get put downstream when the downstream can accept them. This, of course, can cause some delays in processing, but values won't be lost up until the point when you exhaust all memory. So it could delay things a bit, but it'll keep their place in line until you run out of, of ways to buffer them. The next approach is the drop approach. And this basically is an indication to the framework to drop the most recent on next value if the downstream can't keep up with the rate of events because it's too slow. This is pretty much like having a voicemail box on your phone, which will drop voicemails once your your inbox is full, once your mailbox is full. So that's that's probably a good approximation to think of for this. Yet another approach is to throw an exception if the downstream can't keep up because it's too slow. Now, this is an example where the documentation in Project Reactor is incorrect. It says signal an illegal state exception when the downstream can't keep up. That is not what it does anymore. It may have done that in the past. Nowadays, it will throw the overflow exception. And if you want some more information about that, take a look at the link at the bottom of the slide where I work with ChatGPT to check the documentation and get a fresher, modern view of what it's actually doing. So this is a good place to, to learn that. Once again, very, very hard to find this information on the web anywhere. So ChatGPT was a, a real help. I, I kind of think of this as when you're filling up your gas tank, and there's that little notification you get when the gas tank is full, it kind of clicks and stops filling. That's kind of like throwing the overflow exception because you don't want to keep filling up your gas tank when it can't take any more gas. So that's kind of my human known use for this. The next overflow strategy is called ignore. And it basically says there should be no buffering or dropping. So subscribers must handle overflow or they will receive an error. Uh, I've looked at this a lot I still am not entirely sure what the heck this is trying to say. If you take a look at this ChatGPT link, ChatGPT takes a shot at trying to explain it. We'll run some examples here later where you can see what it does, but it's it's really somewhat mysterious what ignore is supposed to do, what its semantics are. So my advice would be to ignore, ignore, and choose one of the other strategies instead. And then the, the last strategy is called latest, and what this says is only keep the latest on next value overriding previous values if the downstream can't keep up before it's too slow. So the best way to think of this is it's basically a buffering strategy that has a buffer of size one. And whenever something comes in and it can't be immediately sent downstream, then the latest value is stored in that buffer and that, will, that latest value is what will be sent downstream. So there can only be one value in the buffer. These strategies can be provided to the Project Reactor Flux framework by using the two-parameter version of the Flux Create operator. You can see here, this is Flux Create. The second parameter is the, the overflow strategy. This is also an example of a very sophisticated marble diagram. Good luck trying to figure it out. You have to read the description to see what it's talking about. And here's an example of how we could do this. We're going to create a flux by emitting from some source. And we're going to use the overflow strategy, which means it'll throw the, the overflow exception if the subscriber can't keep up. And then we're going to go ahead and do some multiplication with each of the elements that's being emitted using flat map. And we're just going to subscribe with a blocking subscriber, blah, 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 blah. We'll look at this example later. And this is just a way to demonstrate how you can put in the overflow strategy. So here we say how we're going to emit the data. And we're just going to omit it all in one big fell swoop. And we're going to throw the overflow exception if the subscriber can't keep up.
the two parameter version of create is different than the one parameter version of flux create, which just buffers all the signals and doesn't support any other back pressure strategy. So by default, you get buffering. If you do not want buffering, then you should go ahead and use the two parameter version that we show here. There are also a bunch of other back pressure operators that you can have with, with fluxes. They're called on back pressure star, where star could be on back pressure drop or on back pressure latest, on back pressure buffer and so on. And you can use these throughout a pipeline of operators. So here's on back pressure drop. And what this says is ignore all the streamed items that can't be processed until the downstream can accept more of them. So in this case, we're gonna have a bunch of mouse moves and we're gonna use on pressure drop. So if they're coming in too fast from however the mouse is moving around, we're just gonna drop things. And that's probably okay as a strategy because it'll make the mouse motion a bit jerky perhaps, but later, later events for mouse location are more important than previous ones anyway. So what's the point of buffering them? Here's another example. This is the on back pressure latest. This is like the drop strategy, but it only keeps the last item. So this is gonna be mouse clicks as opposed to mouse moves. So we're only gonna keep the latest mouse click, which again is probably a sensible thing to do if we're clicking a lot. Here's a, the on back pressure buffer, which creates a buffer to hold the emitted items that can't be processed by the downstream right away. And you can see here that we can actually indicate how big we want the buffer to be. We want it to be 16 elements. And if the buffer's full, then remove the oldest element and use the newer element instead. So you can make your buffers bounded or unbounded. Here's one that's bounded with an additional policy that says what to do if the buffer gets full. So you can see here, we've got tremendous control over the overflow strategies for non-back pressure aware publishers and subscribers. So that wraps up the overview of the overflow strategies.